This is the third and last uh, trading film explaining the interface for TurboCAD uh, on Professional 18. Um, essentially we're going to look at all these ones down here but we may as well walk all the way across the uh, standard toolbar. So you have file, obviously this is where you open files or save files essentially. Uh, edit, we won't bother with that. View, uh, now up to 18 all the tools you could find under view, it would be right down the bottom. This box is much longer. Uh, they're somewhere else now. Uh, so it's just views in views. I mean, the, the, it is a more sensible, rational layout now in 18. Insert, if you want to insert pictures, put uh, hyperlinks, underlay, that's all to do with uh, importing PDFs. And there's a training film that I made for that. Uh, various styles. Tools, now, now under tools and palettes, Here's, here's all our tools and what used to be under view. It seems to make more sense. Uh, we've got uh, a woodworking uh, plug in here that's sort of been in and out of different ver versions, but it's certainly here in platinum here. We've got a trace tool. Uh, lines, various drawings. Dimensioning, obviously. Constraints, high-end uh, 2D engineering um, tool, uh, architectural tools we won't go into, modifier, these are really the ones you're going to use most of, uh, the tools, you know, your, your, your main objects over here and then the way you modify them. Modes is all to do with coordinate systems, I've only, I hardly ever come across anybody that uses anything but absolute coordinate systems. Scripts, um, you're able to bring in scripts or, or write your own scripts. Scripts are, are ways of you being able to, um, what, I suppose, make a little tool of your own for TurboCAD. I know in, in Google SketchUp there's various scripts people bring in to make, um, oh, I don't know, to, to make, uh, make you able to bring 3D warehouse pictures into Photoshop. There's ones that relate to various building structures. Structures. So if there's anything, a particular um, interest of yours, or a need of yours rather, uh, chances are there may be a Ruby script that you can bring in and paste in to the to the program, and, and you know, which is going to help you. Uh, options, that's what I'm going to look at. Uh, Windows, there's the last drawings you did there. Uh, Tile, we'll have a look at in a moment. And help, there's some getting started guides. There's the help topics. There will be the manual here. There'll be keyboard. For keyboard, there's all your keyboard shortcuts. Uh, there's all your single key snap shortcuts. They're the, they're the ones I use mostly. Apart from that, and um, and the general uh, Microsoft Office stuff like Control Z for one step back, Control One Y for one step forward. Alt G turns your grid on and off. Um, what else? Alt A features everything. So it's regular, uh, regular stuff there. About TurboCAD. Uh, if you've bought, say, Professional and you're upgrading to uh, Platinum. You, you'll click on there, upgrade, and that's where you'll put the new number. Um, about TurboCAD will tell you the edition you've got. So if you ever have to phone me up and ask me about something that's not going quite right, I might ask you what edition you've got, and that will tell you. So this one here is Professional 18 Platinum Edition, and it's got the build. Okay, system information, didn't mean to click that. Right, so here's what we're going to mainly look at. The bottom half of this, top half I dealt with in, in uh, number two in this series. Edit materials. So we can have we've got a materials palette with lots of different materials, and those materials will wrap themselves around a 3D object. So uh, you know the bricks will wrap themselves around a, a block or a cylinder or whatever it is. Now, if we bring a different material in, we could bring it in as a picture. We could insert it as a picture. We could go insert picture from file and find a picture. But that would just be a flat picture. If we wanted the picture to be a material, therefore it wraps itself round an object, then we have to bring it in via the materials and load materials, save materials. Um, and there's a video that I've made under Paul DeCad Tracy under YouTube, and it'll t show you and tell you exactly how to load materials on. Environments are backgrounds. So, for example, if you uh, was redesigning a garden, you might take a picture of the garden and then you might uh, do your, all your designs in TurboCAD and then you can put that garden behind it and then when you put the drawing in perspective you can sort of push it around a little bit and square it up to make, sh 
make it look like it's really sitting in the garden and so that's that's an environment luminances are to do with you, you can set lights up but if you want your lights to go through windows and, and gaps in walls and those sorts of things then you need to set them up as a luminance it's not difficult the manual will show you how to do it it's very simple essentially you you're putting a light inside an object so you can have a sphere for your lights and you put the, the light inside of there and you create you make it a luminance rendering styles well they're just uh, you know your, your rendering styles that I think are, there's your rendering styles look at the little cup there uh, so you can have um, wireframe hidden frame draft quality and advanced rendering so wireframe most of the time I would think occasionally if your 3D drawing gets a little bit complicated, you're not quite. Sometimes you get to the stage you're not quite clear what lines in front of what another one is. So you can quickly flick it into hidden line mode, um, just to see what it's like. Draft quality, draft rendering. So it's rendered, but if you use draft rendering, if you're spinning it around, moving it about, it won't take quite so long to to re-render itself. So you'll still get an idea about what the colours are. Uh, quality rendering, obviously, is what it says. Quality rendering, advanced rendering. I never use advanced rendering it just takes forever to do it and then it looks exactly the same to me as uh, its quality rendering was however if you're printing it maybe it makes a difference I don't know uh, I, I don't really use advanced rendering okay so you can do it there you should be able to click up here and uh, obviously find all your other ones uh, we got render in here render there it is so they're up there so you can have them out here as well we'll leave those out for a minute I'll show you something there in a while. Uh, so that's those ones. Uh, then we've got our drawing setup. Um, I wouldn't touch anything here at the beginning. Um, grid. Well, we've got a grid. Uh, we've got points, crosses, lines. Personally, I sort of go for lines. There's, there's your lines. Um, you could go for uh, crosses. Crosses are quite, crosses are quite good as well because you can snap to these points. So if I'm in a, a line, that's a grid point, so I can snap that like G and I can snap to that grid there. So I find those quite useful. Um, oh, and uh, as I said, the uh, Alt G turns a grid off and on again. It's quite useful. Options, grid, so space units. Space units are, we have gone to metric. Now, if you, if you choose metric right at the beginning, uh, it will presume you are using millimeters. If in metric earlier on you've chosen uh, you've chosen metric and then you've chosen meters, then you must change this to meters here as well. Uh, otherwise, when you go to uh, print, uh, you'll see when you ask to see what scale it is, you put it on the paper, it'll say something you don't quite understand. Um, so make sure that those two match. Okay. Apart from now, I wouldn't touch anything here. Here's your angle. Now, I think right at the beginning, I, sh I cho told you about you know if you choose a line down the bottom here, it says length and angle. Well, you can see if I go from the centre over to the right, the angle is naught, and it goes anti-clockwise. You can muck about with this, but I really don't see any point. Layers. You can create layers from here. New, new, new. Any ones you like. If so okay, there be there. If you want to change any names. You have to make sure you say OK here as well as there, and then your layers will be visible up here, or your layers will be visible via the palettes and the uh, design director. And there's your layers there. So there's the layers I've just created, and I can create new layers from there as well, which is the way I'd prefer to do it rather than come up here. So running down, where have we got to? Angle space units. Where's layers got? Uh, uh, angle. Okay, we've done that. A C I S. This is the sort of the basis of of um, I don't know what do you call it, the algebra, or whatever it is. How the solids are created in this in this package and many other packages as well. It's a sort of um, it integrates wireframe, surface, and solid modeling. It's it's just the basis of how this thing works. So you know, I wouldn't dare go anywhere near it. Lightworks is the uh, the the rendering engine for TurboCAD. It's a particularly high quality one. It's, it's you know, punches far above its weight, as they say. Uh, Red Disk, I I don't 
play around with really and I, I, would, I wouldn't suggest it to you at the beginning. Render scene environments, you can bring in different environments. Render scene luminance, I wouldn't muck about with those. Line styles, I think I mentioned before, we've got line styles up the top here. But if you had a particular type of line style you wanted, you could say new and you could create a to totally different line. If you had some sort of chain you wanted to draw, you might be able to draw that in now. Background colour, well if you click on here you can have uh, any background colour you like, which is, uh, I don't think so. And then there's print styles, which you don't really have to bother about at all. Okay, uh, hang on, I'm going to get, let's get our background colour and something sensible. Okay. Um, so, what else was I going to show you? I was going to show you a couple of other little tricks. If you've uh, if you've lost your drawing or you 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 think oh blimey where's the drawing you've got a tool up here that's called zoom extends that brings it back. However, the other way to do it would be just to tap your wheel mouse, just tap it with your finger. Ah, oh, there it goes. I took three shots at it, but it gets there. That does it as well. Okay, so that brings you back. Um, the only one other thing I wanted to show you because this is just a short one is this here. Uh, open layout template so you you could actually uh, look at your drawing from three different directions so look I'm looking at two elevations here and I'm looking at something here so if I in my tools if I drew a box on here you can see it being drawn in all the all the ones at the same time so everything's updating it's everything's updating each whoop hold on go away Everything's updating itself, and so you could draw in that way if you wished. Uh, oh, there it is. And then if you wanted to get rid of one, that's the one you want to work on, you just click onto that, and that's it. And if you want to see the whole thing, and like that. And say, if that gets really confused about what you're seeing there, then you can look at it, about, look at it in hidden line mo mode and do Alt G to turn up your grid if that makes it easy for you to see. Uh, and that is it, really. That's the last film of the user interface. I think that should explain most of it. I'm sure I've missed a couple of bits and pieces here and there, but really I think that's about it.